All right, fun fact. You know that flying car, the 65 Ford Anglia? That's actually a car from J.K. Rowling's life. One of her first friends who could actually drive, that friend's car was a 65 Ford Anglia. The same color, too, actually. That is why the Weasley's family car is the 65 Ford Anglia in the book as well. Here's your fun fact for the day. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So we are back for year two at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. But before we can go back, we actually gotta deal with some stuff first. First off, Harry Potter is coming fresh off his little debacle with Professor Quirrell back in book one. He's really looking forward to going back, but you know, for some reason his friends haven't been writing him. Enter Dobby, the CG house elf, who is probably one of the more annoying creatures in the Harry Potter universe. He shows up in Harry's room one day, he's like, hey, guess what? You can't go back to Hogwarts this year because you're in danger. Harry's all like, yeah, what else is new? But I still wanna go back. Beats hanging out with these stupid Dursleys again. So to try to prevent Harry from going back, he causes some trouble with the Dursleys. They end up barring his window. And then Ron, Fred, and George Weasley show up in the flying 65 Ford Anglia. They rescue Harry from the Dursleys and they take him to the Weasley's house known as the Burrows. And there we meet Arthur Weasley, the Weasley father, who's really fun in this film. And we also see the first signs of Ginny's crush on Harry, which I can't help but laugh when you see her go all bug-eyed. <laughs> I love that part. And before long, we travel by flu powder and we're back in Diagon Alley where we meet a few new characters. First of all, Jason I Isaacs as Lucius Malfoy, who does a really good job of just milking his part. It's awesome. He has one of the best evil voices in this entire franchise and all those extra raids. What's the use of being a disgrace to the name of wizard? But they don't even pay you well for it. It's fun. And once again, thanks to Dobby, Harry and Ron can't get to the platform nine and three quarters. So they end up taking the flying car, which is a great sequence. And we're finally back at Hogwarts. Now the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher this year is Kenneth Branagh as Gilderoy Lockhart. I love this guy. He's a total flake. He's a poof. He acts like he knows everything, but he really doesn't know jack shit. He's like me in first grade. I mean, the scene after the Quidditch match where he tries to mend Harry's broken arm, he casts a spell and it ends up taking away all the bones there. So his arm just like flips over like that, like really gross. Uh, yeah, nicely done, Professor Lockhart. You you stupid ass. But one of the greatest things we get here in year two is a solid example of Harry and Draco Malfoy's rivalry. This is where the rivalry is at its prime because we get the duel scene. Lockhart is like, all right, cast your spells at the count of three. One. Two. But Draco doesn't care about count offs. Before he gets the three, he casts a spell. Sends Harry flying backwards. They're going at it, guys. And Draco casts a snake spell. Sup and salt ya. And here is actually where we learn that Harry has the ability to speak to snakes. He's a parcel mouth. He can speak parcel tongue, the snake language, which does not really bode well for anyone else at Hogwarts. Because they're like, wait a minute, is this guy the heir of Slytherin, the descendant of Salazar's Slytherin himself? The reason why they're wondering that is because they learned that the Chamber of Secrets has been opened at Hogwarts, the secret chamber created by Salazar Slytherin who believe that the only students who were worthy to study magic at Hogwarts were pure bloods, people who were born into wizardry by both parents who had magic. This is actually where we get into the politics of the wizarding world, pure bloods versus muggle-borns, such as Hermione Granger, which is actually kind of ironic that she's like the really smart wizard and both her parents are muggles. So we're trying to figure out this mystery, okay, who is the heir of Slytherin? What's going on with the Chamber of Secrets? Various people around the school are getting petrified. So to try to figure this out, we get to a segment where Harry, Ron, and Hermione are brewing this thing called Polyjuice Potion, which allows the drinker to take on the physical form of someone else. And while we're brewing this stuff, we meet a character named Moaning Myrtle, which believe it or not, she was actually played by like a 30 something year old. You wouldn't think it by looking at her, but that's the truth. And I love Moaning Myrtle, seriously. Like her voice, I don't know what it is. She sounds like a British Harley Quinn, but around the third act, who should get petrified but Hermione, which I love that plot twist. I mean, Hermione is almost like a cheat if you're gonna do something like this. Harry and Ron now have to go it alone without Hermione, without the really smart one. They're on their own. And once again, we have a final throwdown at the end with Harry Potter and Tom Riddle, who we learn is who Voldemort was before he was Voldemort. He was just another student at Hogwarts who was just kind of a messed up kid. I love that this film really just gives us more backstory into Voldemort, just opens up the world more. Again, it's all about the whimsy because we're still being introduced to this giant world. And yeah, that final throwdown with the Basilisk, it's fun, it's exciting, again. This is actually the longest film in the entire eight movie series. The extended edition is like just under three hours. And this is Richard Harris's last time playing Dumbledore because he actually passed away like right before this film came out. And you can kind of hear it in his voice. He talks all like, oh, Fox. He's a phoenix, Harry. So Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, the child acting is a little better. Hermione is a lot nicer. It is a lot better than the first one. It is actually my favorite out of the first three, but of course the best is yet to come. So Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Have you seen it? Have you watched it recently? How does it rank among all the Harry Potter films for you? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.